My name is Cristobal Wawi. I'm a wheat geneticist at the John Innes Center and I work on understanding wheat yield and uh, wheat grain development using the latest wheat genomic resources. So when we look forward in the projections, we're going to need to produce roughly 50% more than we're producing at the moment of m the major crops. And that's because people, there's more people, they're eating, changing their dietary habits. So we need, to, we need to do better and we need to do it now. We can't afford, because of how long it takes to breed new varieties, we can't afford to let the problem get upon us. It's upon us already. So we need to do big changes now. And, and if you put this in another perspective, uh, we all eat 50 wheat plants every day every day, every, every person around the world. So we need to find ways to increase yield in a sustainable manner. And we think that using genetics and science-based solutions, we'll be able to achieve that to complement the traditional breeding that's been used until now. So we start thinking what could be our contribution to understanding yield. And yield is quite complicated because it's not controlled by a single gene. It's many genes that come together in an environment to give your final yield. So we thought, how can we break that big problem into smaller pieces? And we started looking at the, how we could affect or understand the biology of grain size, meaning the, the width of the grain, the length of the grain, and that determines how heavy that grain is. And that is a big component of the final yield. So our idea was to say, can we look at natural variation, basically what is already out there in the UK varieties and world varieties to see if we could understand the genes controlling yield. And we found a, a big surprise was that many of the genes that are controlling yield are controlling a very small percentage of that variation, meaning that if we make lines with and without one specific gene, we only have an increase in 5%. So we need to achieve 50% in the next few years, right? And then 5% is that enough? But 5% still is a huge improvement because it basically translates that into 500 extra loaves of bread per hectare. So in the great scheme of things, it's important, but it's not enough. And that's why we're trying to look at new ways of using variation to try to uncover and increase that, that, that range of improvement. The other thing we started asking was, can we find new tools to understand which genes are expressed under which conditions? So uh, whenever there's a drought, which genes are more important than others? So we developed tools to do that. And finally, we developed tools that allow us to test a very specific question as, what does this gene do in wheat? And that's a question that's fundamental for biology and also for breeding, but something we couldn't answer. It just took too long before. We now have a way to do it uh, in a non-transgenic manner, so just using mutagenesis, which is uh, a pillar of breeding for the last 100, 200 years. But we've been able to use that technique and use the new molecular technologies to actually be sequence those mutants. By sequencing those mutants, we now have access not just to um, basically the variation that we see, but actually the variation in the DNA. And we can ask questions that just, we just couldn't even think about asking literally 24 months ago. So one of the questions we had when we started looking at this natural variation, this 5% yield, we said, well, why does wheat behave like this? Because when we look at other species like rice or barley or maize, which are simpler in their, in, their, in their characteristics, we find that there's genes that control much larger percentage of variation. So a single gene might increase grain size by 20 or 30%. So why is wheat so special? Why does wheat only increase 5%? And it's not just us, but researchers around the world have seen that when they do these studies, they can only see about 5% increase in yield. So we started thinking and we find that wheat is a polyploid. That means that wheat has, in essence, three copies of every gene. And when we looked at what we knew from other species, we find that a lot of the genes that are controlling the size of the grain are what we call negative regulators. So in another way, they're molecular breaks that stop the grain from growing. So in other species that have very simple, they have one copy, you have a grain, you stop it. If you can take that gene out, the grain gets much bigger. In wheat, you have three copies of those breaks. So it's like having three breaks off at the same time. You take one off and the grain still will get a certain size, but will still be uh, broken up by these, these molecular breaks that are stopping it from growing too big. So now the question is that this is the 5% that we're seeing when you have three breaks on or two breaks on. And now the fascinating question is what happens if we start taking two breaks off or more importantly, once you take all the breaks off? Will we see variation? 30 or 40% like we see in other species that are simpler than wheat, will we get that variation? And incredibly, that variation has never been subject to natural selection or to breeders. No one has seen that variation. And for the first time, we'll be able to see that variation in the field this year. So it gets really exciting because now we'll be able to test that hypothesis. If we take all the breaks off, what will happen to wheat? How much can we actually increase the wheat plant? 